What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode number 61, 61, 61 of the King's Speech Podcast, guys, with Trevor and Josh, the podcast you can relate to, learn from, and laugh at from two guys who realize the streets and the club only look fun on television not right now. What's good, Josh? Trev, what's going on, baby? Happy holidays. Happy holidays, indeed. It is Christmas week. Five days. Five days. Five days. Four days. Five days to Christmas. No pressure. Four days. If you're Four days. If it's Monday. So if it's Wednesday and you're listening, it's two days till Christmas. Yeah, it's nuts. Essentially, that's nuts. They crept up on us very, very quickly. Um, <sighs> like everything else this year crept up, that, that, that crept up on us. Everything else. COVID. Well, that's 2020, right? 2020. That's just all what 2020 is. We're gonna have like a pretty, uh, you know, pretty brief like 2020 recap. Some of the biggest stories of the year. Um, also, next week, um, I probably should have told you know my podcast partner this. I put together yesterday like um, a few of our, I guess, like best clips, our most viewed clips. Uh, so that's gonna be our 2020 recap available yeah, exclusively, exclusively on the, on the YouTube. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah, we'll pump. Uh, so definitely take a gander at that when we drop it next week. No episode next week, guys. Uh, we'll be hung over and we'll be off our phones, over. off our media, and giving oh, the yeah. full attention to our loved ones. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Present in the moment. Present. <laughs> exactly. More present. And yeah, Trump present gave his PTO. with present. Everybody, Trump just gave us PTO. <laughs> <laughs> Talking to the rest of the staff. Yeah, the staff is ecstatic. The staff yeah, is happy. The staff, staff is, staff is, is happy. Keeps like, all right, my nigga, cool. <laughs> Great. Now, now you're just gonna look at me. <laughs> awesome, awesome. So we got, of course, like we have our um, two stories each to go through uh, for the week, and then also after that, we'll get to our you know 2020 recap of some of the top stories. Um, we got a lot coming up in this episode, indeed. First, of course, you know we were off last week. Um, how was your week? How was your week, Josh? Uh, my week has been good. Um, just taking care of my health right now, uh, making sure mm-hmm. that I stay safe and healthy during this holiday season, uh, during this COVID season. Um, so just doing my precautionaries. I got sanitizer right here. I don't know if y'all forgot, but it's still a thing. Okay. <laughs> um, don't, oh, also, if you have sanitizer that ever smells bad, just pour some um, lavender essential oils in it, and it literally <laughs> takes that nasty alcohol right out. Okay. So that's what I got for you. That's how I've been. Have you? I love been the hand Trev? sanitizer PSA. <laughs> love it. Just love it. Mid pod. <laughs> Mid pod. <laughs> That is awesome. Kim would be proud. I, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure everybody's. I'm sure Kim's Everyone, proud. I'm sure your parents are proud. You know what it is? It's Absolutely. Like when you when you get a fiance, you also like gain someone who holds you accountable for doing things. You're like yo yo yo. I'm like yo yo yo. My bad. And so this is why I have the big sanitizer now. Right there, readily available. <laughs> readily available. Yeah, I've learned. I've learned accountability. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's cool. It's great. Copy that. Indeed. Cool. 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 So we got, what do you want? Oh, so who went first last week? I went first last week, right? Well, we were off technically. For our two topics. No, no, oh, hold week on. Before. Tell us about Costa Rica, man. Oh, Costa Rica. Yes, Dip I was in Costa from Rica. State to state, coast to coast. Island coast to coast. Island. Travel first class to change the forecast. Oof. Oh, now nah, we one. do. <laughs> now nah, we do. Um, yeah, it was great. You know, weather was great. It's in their dry season right now. So there's no like precipitation or rain or storms or anything like that. Did a really dope rainforest hike, you know. Okay, uh, how long the was the hike? Give me some stats. Give me some stats. The hike was long. The hike was about like three hours. And it was okay. about, I want to say like three and a half or four miles. Did you like, troop it the entire time or were you like, eh. Yeah. No, nah, we were walking. We were walking. Like there were some steps, uh, some hurdles, some really like challenging terrain. Yeah. But then we also saw like some waterfalls. Anybody who follows some dope me on. Stuff. Was the water warm? Yeah. It was really um. There was a hot so there was the waterfalls. The water was cold at the waterfalls. Ice cold. But then or there like were these like cold. You can do it. I mean, it was it was done. I mean, we had to do it for the gram, right? Like had to get in there and just be comfortable. That's how I felt. Like those rivers <laughs> for like, the gram. Do it for the gram. Like, God damn it, the gram. That water Absolutely. cold. Absolutely. <laughs> that water was cold as shit. Yeah. Um, yeah okay. Then I'll tell you but that. But then Thanks. after that, we went to like these uh, these hot springs. And that water was really warm. The last hot spring we were at, like the water was really warm. It was okay. really cool. It was a great experience. Our shout out to our tour guide, Joaquin, um, Costa Rican native. 
knows the forest frontwards and backwards, knew all of the different like species and ants and algae in the water and oh, different bullshit. snakes yeah, that's and a, all that's that stuff a like that. Ant and that's a that's that a was scammer dope. ant and uh, that's <laughs> yeah. We were introduced to a um, a butter a, a transparent butterfly. So okay. when they fly, their wings get see through. Why do they fly like that? I don't understand why they fly. Like so that. they no, they fly just like that. Okay. Just like that. Okay. But they're transparent, so you can't see them. So it's like it's just it's like no it's like no hands. That's actually kind of like lit. Flying and it, it's supposed to you know keep them concealed from predators like birds and other things that try to eat them because if they start flying, they start fluttering and then they just like disappear. That's actually it's a very good thing. Impressive. This is a video podcast too. Yeah. This is actually, Indeed, get the full experience. Uh, but it was great. It was a great, great trip. Um, definitely would make that trip again. Would recommend anybody to visit Costa Rica. Um, the, the the actual like trip to the forest though was very treacherous. We had a, a, a rental car and basically like drove across a lake. Yeah, I drove, drove by like, yourself. Yeah, the tour guide. No, it was us. We drove by ourselves. When we got there, there was a tour guide at the actual like rainforest. Yeah, I drove through a lake. We drove through a lake. Like a small lake, and then we, um, I was, it worked apparently. We're still here. Um, we're here <laughs> to tell we're the still tale. here. Car, yeah. car in the water. Like, what do you mean, drove through a lake? Car intact. So it was like a, I don't want to say lake, I'm sorry. It was like a river, like a small, like little river that, um, that like went across this, um, like really like thin road. So then once you get past the river, it's just like two strips of concrete for your wheels. And then, like, on one end, the concrete was like broken off. So I literally had to like, Rev the car, continue to rev the car to get it up the hill. It was, it was a, it was an adventure. Were you scared? Uh, I was a little worried. You can tell, you can tell me here. Not scared. That's a crazy. I was a little worried. I know this is a safe place. Yeah. I was a little worried, just a little bit. Okay. Um, but what then was there the was mirror, this. What uh, was the mirror doing in the passenger side? And what side of the car were you on? What do you mean? Oh you no, drive, it's the same side. Same you drive side? on the same side cool, in Costa Rica. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. Right, and what was the mirror um, saying? She was just like, oh, "Should we go?" Like, is this okay? Like, do you feel okay driving this? And I was like, Sh- I mean, I, I had to feel okay. Um, and like, there was yeah, no, the road was at the spot. We have to feel okay. <laughs> <laughs> the road actually went, we went to the wrong spot because we wanted to go to the, we ended up at the wrong place. Okay. And standard, uh, we wanted to go to your local island. Exactly. Like the place we originally <laughs> wanted to go Long to. Island? <laughs> Sorry, and I'm driving. <laughs> Good luck. Because like the road wasn't paved. There's no concrete leading up to this like rainforest. It's all dirt and rocks. Yeah. Um, but the place we were originally supposed to go was like supposed to be like this easy ride. Apparently, we got there. Make a left and a left. Yeah, make a, we, that's exactly what it was. If we wouldn't made a left, then we would have got to that other place like super easy. But then we wouldn't have had the same left. experience. No, no, you need so, these experiences so you can tell the yeah. kids later. Like, yo, we got lost in Costa Rica. Yeah. I mean, we weren't lost. We had no service on our phones. So we were basically just like going off the directions that we saved in our phone right, before right. we left the resort. Um, but it was good. It was great. That's good. Little Costa Rica was dope. Happy birthday to Demira. Shout out to her. Yes, indeed. Happy birthday to my lovely lady. Yeah. Absolutely. Indeed. She's the bomb. Dot com. Dot com. Absolutely. Um, great website. Bomb. Dot com. Where are you? Uh, kick us off, man. Where are you taking? Oh, snap. Yeah, Yeah. Kick us off. Yeah, so um, first story. So I know you also have this in here, so we're probably yeah. going to have a lot of vaccine talk today. We can just uh, fuse today. that if you want. We can fuse it. I can give you my what I got, and you can give me what you got. Yes, absolutely. Right. So a few weeks ago, Sarah Lindsay, a, um, a black nurse here in New York, she ah. was the first person to receive the COVID-19 vaccine. And um, she's been working throughout the pandemic she had an interview where she basically told people why they should trust the vaccine. She says they should trust the vaccine because it's guided by science. They should ask questions, consult their healthcare provider, have their list of questions that they want to ask so they feel comfortable, and just listen to the experts. Which I think is some very level-headed, no, level-headed. intelligent advice, right? But- um my whole emphasis with this is that a lot of people are taking their cues about whether or not they want to take the vaccine from people on social media who smoke hookah five times a day. Big shisha. Or cigar or eight or nine cigarettes a day yeah, yeah. or dark liquor every night it's, that don't take care of themselves. Like they'll put everything else in their body except the vaccine that's going to prevent them from getting one of the deadliest viruses that we've seen. So you're in on you're in on the vaccine because that was going to be my question. You're in on the vaccine, absolutely. 
Okay. Gotta be. Cool. Gotta be. And the thing is, if you have questions about it, ask, talk to your doctor <clears throat> or talk to a doctor. No, that's don't. I, I think that's very. I think that's very here. I'm also here for the jokes. So Sandra <laughs> Lindsay, right uh -huh. from Jamaica, is literally everyone's. Like everyone knows this Jamaican auntie, the, uh, the one Jamaican auntie nurse. Yes. Yeah, the uh, Jamaican auntie nurse who just the one who just is far left. That's Sandra, because like she's like yo 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 just. Just try the, like, why are you the first one trying the vaccine? I don't know why Sandra's the first one trying think, the vaccine, but I think they made her the first one because she, um, she works at Jamaica hospital. And of course, like the hardest hit communities were black communities and she's a black nurse and she's been on the front lines with the pandemic very, um, like very frequently. So I just feel like it was good optics, and it felt like like those are the people oh, that really the need optics. it the most. What do you think about the optics of the people um, taking the vaccine from empty syringes? How do you Who's feel doing about that? Those optics. There was a couple of videos floating around. There was doctors. I don't believe that. You don't believe that? See, but listen, nah. this is what's out there. Um, I am in the middle. I think that uh, here, here's 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 a thought that I actually honestly had. Right, growing mm -hmm. up in school. Um, we learned that it takes about three to five years to test any type of vaccine or medication to see what the side effects will truly be, mm -hmm. right? So I had a conflicting thought today, and the conflicting thought was that science has advanced, right? So that yep. means that we should technically be able to get, like, we get, we're getting medicine quicker, we're getting results quicker, so we should be able to know, the, I guess, the side effects quicker, Right. But the thing is, this is something that is it's brand new. It's over time. So I don't know if what we're seeing right now is a correct depiction of this long-term effect that this vaccine could have. And so that's like my only really concern with it, honestly. It's just that it hasn't really been tested for as long. I think mm -hmm. that I do believe in science. and I do believe that technology is advancing. I'm just a little wary. The only thing I'm worried about is just that like, where ha like like if they have given us like yo we've been trying this for some time you know what i'm saying or we knew covid was coming so we've been trying this vaccine for over five years and boom but when covid dropped it was like yo we're gonna get a vaccine we're gonna you know what i mean and we're just gonna put it out like i just don't feel like it's been tested yet I, I, I understand that perspective as well um but that's why i feel like we gotta ask ask those tough questions right like if you're about to be vaccinated I imagine when it, you know, becomes available for mass consumption that you're going to have to, like, make a reservation or, you know, schedule something to actually go and get the vaccine. And I imagine when you do that, there will be, like you listed, a bunch of, you know, common questions and answers that people would have that people could research. And then even up to the point of going to this medical facility to be vaccinated, there will still be doctors and people who are rooted in scientific thought and study that can answer these questions for you. And then right. at that point, you can make that decision whether or not you want to vaccinate yourself against COVID-19 or not. I, of I course, like it should always, it should always be an option. It's not anything that should be, you know, mandatory as far as being vaccinated. Um, except if you're going to, I mean, anti-vaxxers sometimes put their kids and other kids in school at risk, which is crazy to me. Uh, but I just think like science is a real thing, right? And we no, do everything in, in our mind to like get these conspiracy theories steamed so we can sound cool at the water cooler or sound like we're smarter than we really are. But ultimately, like talk to people who know science. No, I think I think if we talk to people that we know science, right, and they and, and in that same scenario you just gave, then we're just both equally as educated on what we know on that subject matter, which is the vaccine and what it could do for you. Mm -hmm. I think at that moment, like you and the doctor will become equals because we don't know what the long term is. They don't know what the long term is because we haven't seen it yet. Right. And mm -hmm. that's like my only thing. I was just like, like, I think I'm, I'm rocking with science all the way through. Right. But it's just like the reason why we know that Advil is good for us today is because they've tested Advil for years before they put it on the shelf. Yeah. Along with every other medicine. So my thing is like, this is so, this is so like, it's either that they tell us like, yo, this is not a new formula and it's been tested and here are results. Or if not, then everyone is literally just finding out day by day. The Which only thing is, I don't understand. Yeah, go ahead. It's unwary for me just in that, in that, in that regards. So 
I understand that perspective. The only thing I don't understand is it's 2020. You know, both of us are in our 30s. Yeah. How many shots have you gotten in your life? I've gotten the ones that was mandatory. The and the only one that like that's been sus. Here's the only sus shot I've gotten in my life. Like the one that's not been tested. The one that's well it has been tested, but it's been sus or foreign to me. And that would be like the flu shot. Like that would be the only thing that like I've gotten that hasn't been mandatory for my physician. Does that make sense? Yes. So, that's but like, the, as, but and, other, but other stuff, you just like, hey, go to the doctor, get a checkup. Hey, I got a shot for you. Shot, boom, done. Go home. Bandaid on the arm, lollipop, all that. Yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah, so, so you're that's what we've been. Me. Yeah. No, it's okay. it's nuts. I'll just what it is what it is. Yeah. Um. After thirty five years of just getting shots from doctors. It's, it I'm gonna get some more. Yeah, I'm yeah, gonna get yeah, some yeah. more shots if I need them. I'm with you. <laughs> like, I'm with you. I just. I'm with you. And I'm good. I'm with you. I'm with you. I I really am with you, like overall. But like I guess I have to out loud at least say this. I'm a little worried. You know what I mean? Like I'm a, like, but it is what it is. You got to roll with the punches. We have to do what we have to do with this time. This 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 COVID thing is real. It is killing people, and we need to get back outside. So like. Ultimately, what are we going to do? Say no? No, nah, we're not going to say no, right? But like, still, I just don't want to be a sheep or like that's herded. I just I, I want to have a voice and be like, yo, I think it's a little weird. It's a brand new drug. Don't trust what's, it yet. What's what's your I guess hesitancy or like worry rooted in? Just like the long term effects or anything long-term else? Long term effects. Just un, 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 undocumented long term effects. We, we just don't know. We don't know if like we just don't know what the long term is. And that's as long as it doesn't make thing. my. As long as it doesn't make my dick soft, I'm good. Fam, that's really what I'm concerned about. I haven't put no kids out. Okay. No, I'm good. I, um, no, in all seriousness, I think it's really important. I have a couple of facts here on the vaccine um, mm-hmm. that everyone should know. So the first thing you should know that it is free. It's a completely free flu shot, which is also, hey, I mean, do your diligence, right? Um, flu-like symptoms are normal post-shot. So some mm-hmm. of the side effects as of right now have been flu-like symptoms. So um, it might, it just might feel like a standard flu. Um, well, I wanted to say before you, like the, the point of a vaccine is like a, a vaccine is ideally supposed to like trick your body into thinking you, have, you have the virus. The so virus. The and virus, then so you build the antibodies. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So I think that's, you know, I think, I think this is good. You know what I mean? Like I, I, it sounds good. Um, it's a, depending on the specific vaccine that you get, um, you get your first shot and then you get your next one in like three to four weeks after that. Um, and then the weirdest thing that I did see was this point here that I wrote in. It says the CDC has developed a new tool called VSAFE as an additional layer of safety monitoring to increase our ability to rapidly detect any safety issues with the COVID-19 vaccines. Mm-hmm. So it's a smartphone-based app that basically checks in with you after the vaccine. The only thing that I'm not really sure of after reading this is if they can track it on their own based on what's in your body. No. Right? No. Okay? Stop. No. Trevor, no. but... No, no. No, 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 right? No. No, but what is the V-Safe tracker? Do we know? We don't know. We can't just say no. Listen, if you have... How can the it. government get information... They, you have a phone. Yes. The government doesn't need anything uh, doesn't need any other information from us. We have a phone with yeah. all our pictures, our phone numbers, our addresses, okay. where we're going to be on Thursday at 1 p.m. Okay, the gonna, government gonna, has gonna clarify, everything already. I'm going to clarify. clarify. I just looked it up. So V-Safe, you, I wanted to make sure because I wasn't sure. Uh-huh. I wasn't sure if it was like, yo... Open up your phone and look at your vitals. You feel me? Because it says mm-hmm. a way for you to check after the thing. But what it is, is a questionnaire that you okay. fill in and you submit for statistics. So basically, either way, we are just going to be statistics. We're going to be the test dummies. And- I, I mean, you know, it is what it is, right? You start, you try something new. It is what it is. Like, I'm sure they got people filling out surveys for the PS5. You already took the about the About the gameplay. No, I have not, but I will. <laughs> <laughs> I will the first opportunity I get. I will schedule a vaccine appointment. Yeah, you're really taking a vaccine. You're first man up. I mean, if I if I got the opportunity, you're right in your parks bag right now. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I I, I and, and there's I touched on it a little a few seconds ago. There's this is like idea that the government needs to do extra stuff to track us. 
They got to put something in our food or something in our water or give us a shot with a chip in it. We voluntarily give all this information away so that we could get 25% off a Fashion Nova outfit. We voluntarily give yeah, away give the, our email. Kind of fashion Nova go for 90%. Our phone number, as soon as we see that little thing pop up, put in your email address, get 20% off. What do we do? Put in our fucking email address. Wait, and then one we more step. Order Social it. Security for verification. Oh, yeah. Exactly. One, two, and I go crazy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Boom. Send that shit. I yeah. want it now. So we voluntarily give away information for shit way, 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 way less important than the vaccination of a deadly virus. No, I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you. I just gotta, you know what I mean? I gotta give it another side. I'm with you, though. I understand. I understand the other side. The other, my, my thing is like sometimes that, not from your, your side isn't dangerous, but there are people out there that are spewing some really dangerous shit about not taking the vaccine or oh, no, not no, no. trusting the vaccine or not even trusting that COVID is a real thing. No, it's real. It's, 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 it's dangerous <laughs> from that perspective. Yeah. You know? So, you know, I, I am going to take the vaccine. Trevor Mason from the King's Speech podcast oh, is see? going to take the vaccine. you're announcing it for the government. Hey, government. Absolutely. Speech, hey, government. Hey, government, hey, some more information about me. I'm going to take the vaccine. <laughs> That's how it go. Indeed. Government knows how much I made last year, how much I'm making now. They take a good portion of it. Like, come on. They have all the shit they need. They don't need a chip in me. Where the fuck are they going to track me? Yo, the the gym? be looking out. <laughs> For what? I'm a security risk because I go to the gym more than twice a week? Get the fuck out of here. I got to delete my gym membership ASAP. Oh, you, got a gym, you still got a gym membership up here? Yes, and the hoops that they're making me run through right now is literally nuts. And they're charging me every month. I got to do it today. A just certified letter. Just call your bank and tell them to cancel it. Oh, cancel the charges. Can't, can't. Oh, wow. Wow. That can work, too. Yeah! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Skips are us. The government's listening. What's up? <laughs> now nah, we here. Yeah, I called him right now. We call him on the phone. See the thing works. Yeah, just call whatever card is attached to that. Chase, bank to say hey, like hello, Chase. I, I need a hundred and two hundred dollars back. Like hey, tell them to like tell like stop. Tell them to stop taking my name out. Yeah. Um, All right, y'all. So yeah, next yeah. up, I had a story here. So it's a pretty old story, but I just think it's really really interesting. Um, Snoop Dogg a few weeks ago came for WAP. Apparently, Snoop Dogg is not a fan of WAP by Cardi B and Meg The Stallion. Um, he feels like they're just like putting it all out there in the video, putting it all out there in the music, and it's just too much. There should be some mystery. There should be some valuing of their flowers. Um, they shouldn't just like have it out all on Front Street. Um, Offset responded in defense of his wife. He said, she's grown I don't get in females' business, so I'm just going to say I hate when men do that. So Offset does not want men in, men, in women's business. Uh, Snoop Dogg, I guess, is having a change of heart after notable tracks as Bitches Ain't Shit and Ain't No Fun If The Homies Can't Have None. If This is actually really, this is actually really good. This is really good because there's so much we could talk about on this. right? Basically, Snoop Dogg... Mm -hmm. Forgot about his old tweets, clearly. Something that or I lyrics about, or lyrics, but essentially in his days, like his because they didn't have Twitter, like his lyrics are his tweets, and his Copy his that. old tweets are wild. Like Snoop's old lyrics are wild, but he got older, and I guess he's in a more mature place, and so he's speaking from that place of maturity. But he's also speaking to the same that a person who is in the same age group that he was at at this age, making those same yes. immature tweets, right? So I said it to say. That, you know, is it his place as an OG to come in and be like, yo, I used to be like this and it's not like, you know what I mean? Just don't get involved. I, that's how I feel. Because I feel like there are so many guys that talk about sex and music and women should be, like, should have the leverage to be able to do the same thing. I, I think. Even if it's not your cup of tea. Even if it's not something that you, that you fuck with on the regular when you listen to music. The opportunity and the freedom to do that should be there. I just want to go through a few Snoop Dogg lyrics. Just parental parental advisory for anybody listening right now. Get them now. off. Get them off. If you're in the in the car with the kids, 
uh, put put the headphones in, have them watch Paw Patrol or something like that. Um, so Snoop Dogg in Ain't No Fun says, guess who's back in the motherfucking house with a fat dick for <laughs> no. your motherfucking mouth? Hoes recognize, niggas do too, because when bitches get scandalous and pull a voodoo, what you going to do? You really don't know. So I'd advise you not to trust that hoe. Number one record, platinum 10 times. I love record. it. It I love hits. it. Yo, it hit when Ain't I Ain't no fun hits you. hard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like, that hits, right? Absolutely. Yo, yo, can I tell you something? So I never really listen to lyrics, right? Like, I, ne- like uh-huh. I never really pay attention to lyrics. Maybe ADD, maybe not. Who knows, right? So, like, the song goes on, and I just love the bop, the cadence, the flow, the, the acoustics of this song, top yeah. to bottom. That's what I love about it. Just the way it sounds, it's aesthetically pleasing to my ears, right? Or... Whatever. So one day <laughs> I'm like, pleasing. Sonic, yeah, sonically, ple- sonically pleasing. Yes. So I go to Kim one day. Wow, gotta edit, 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 edit. Right? So I go to Kim one day, and I'm like, Yo, this is one of the best songs I've ever heard. I love this song. And she looks at me. She goes, This song? And I'm like, Yeah, this shit's fire. You don't think this shit's fire? She's like, Have you listened to the lyrics? I'm like, Nah, 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 really. Uh, Fuck lyrics. She put the lyrics on. I was like, my bad, baby. I'm so sorry. I like cover her ears. I cover my no, ears. Listen, it's a great it was, song. And until you, realize until you realize well, you're, you're harmonizing and advocating for, you know, large amounts of group sex yeah. <laughs> with somebody that you're having sex with. Because it ain't no fun. Did. It's no, it is, it is absolutely no fun to have sex with you unless the homies can too. That's essentially what you're harmonizing and, the and humming. Homies love that song when it comes. Yo, I lived in LA for two years, dog. When that so every time that song came on, that shit goes. Like, Absolutely. That was it's a like, great song. That's like LA's like timeless classic. Like it's like that shit goes. Everyone in the spot. Girls over here, like, yeah. Snoop Absolutely. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Them Indeed. lyrics. Them lyrics. But yes, yeah, yeah, I just, I I just mean, thought it's I, I just thought it was involved. funny. I, I just think Snoop Dogg is all time great, of course. Uncle Snoop, you know, he's been able to beat murder charges and then do, you know, cooking shows with Martha Stewart. The range, the range is admirable. The range, admirable, absolutely. Um, that's what I got. That's what okay. I got for this week. What you got? I, I tapped into your uh, COVID vaccine as well. Um, mm-hmm. Want to take a big shout out. I like this is one weekend I could honestly say I wish I was in New York City. Not because you guys got the snowstorm, but because Rowdy is home. And I can only imagine what the energy on Hot 97 felt like when Rowdy, like, you know what I mean? When, when Flex, like, I, I yeah. know, I know Flex is a couple pounds lighter, you know what I mean? So I don't know if, and he makes a lot of <laughs> it's duck a little faces. slimmer. He's slim and he makes a lot of duck faces. I don't know what's Hit going those, on with Flex. Yeah, I, he's like pouting peep, on the gram. A lot of like, like his shorty pulled up on him and he's like this, and I'm like, whoa, 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 Flex, hey, duck face, like, tone it down, Pepe. That was very alarming. Yeah. So, um, I don't know what he's going through, but I can only imagine what the city felt like with Rowdy. So I want to talk to you where you tapped in to the streets. <laughs> Did you have your pulse on what's going on in the New York City? Tapped into the streets. Come on, you know what I mean. I don't know about all that. Um, no, it was uh, you know, I was you know on social media and then also listening to the radio and stuff like that. And it's a big deal. It's a big deal that Rowdy deal, Rebel man. is home. Um, it's, it's huge for Brooklyn. It's huge for that 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 sound. Um, I don't know if we. I don't know if we give him that. I'm not even lumping him in with the pop. What do you mean? I don't. I, I don't know what his affiliation with the pop. Continue though, continue because I was just thinking about. I was just thinking out loud. No, it's, it's it's the sound, it's the movement, it's, it's, it's the movement, it's the, right? It is the movement. It's the all, energy. That, that's the, I guess you know that, what I'm saying. I guess pop is a is a is a is a branch from that sound. I guess pop is one of the. I guess I guess you could say like forefathers of it. Right. So I'm trying to. See and then I think. This. Um, and then Bobby Schmurda is also a forefather of it. Um, I think. I think in too. fact, let me let me like um let me rewind that. Bobby Schmurd is the forefather. Pop yes. Smoke is kind of like the guy that took it to another level. And you know, then you he got up Fav- the mantle because Bobby was in jail. Yeah. And then Fabio is also out here taking that sound to another level. And now Rowdy's back out and he'll continue to take that sound to yeah, other hopefully. levels, you know, God willing. Um Did you hear did you hear the track? Did you like it? I mean, it sounds like everything else. It sounds like everything <laughs> else. <laughs> yo, Kim was I'm like, yo, Kim, I like baby, Rowdy got a new verse. She's like, yo, how's it sound? Like, I don't know. It sounds like everything else. It could be good, I think. 
It was. I mean, it was good for what it was, right? Like I listened to it. That's what I said. It was good for what it was. Two times. It was what it. I mean, it sounds like what it sounds like. Like it doesn't sound different. Like maybe, I, maybe more time home, more time in studio, more time, you know, perfecting his craft, which I'm sure he'll take. Yeah, it'll come out and he'll put his own kind of sauce on it because that's because the sound and the beats and the rhythms are kind of are very similar. Yeah, the only thing different is that like these different artists put their own sauce on it, right? Like Fabio puts his own sauce on it. Pop put his own sauce on it. Bob used to put his own sauce on it. Um, so. King Von used to put his own sauce on it, you know, God rest his soul. So I think the sound is the thing, but Rowdy's got to find a way to like put a, a consistent sauce on it to um, to really make the impact that we think that he can yeah, make. he got to come through. He got to give us, in he this does sound need to give us music. one thing though. He needs to give us one thing. In this day and age, he'll stay relevant. He'll stay on top. But in the music game, like I would love to catch like a real crazy Rowdy slapper. Like, you know what I mean? Like a, like that's what I would love to see, just on like, cause like to me that's a full circle of a redemption story. Like to go, go to jail, come out, come out with a banger. Like that would be tough, and I would love to see him in, enjoy that. Um, something else I wanted to talk to you about is a hundred k on the walkthrough. Okay, so we talked about it uh, a couple of weeks ago. James Harden gave little baby a hundred k for his birthday. <laughs> okay, and some a couple of honey buns. Uh-huh. And then when Rowdy came home, his man's uh, Luciano gave him 100k and picked him up in a Rolls Royce. What do you what do you what do you have to say about that? It's and then great straight to, have to friends ju- like that. Oh my God! Where <laughs> are my niggas? Why are none of my niggas involved in the streets? It's good to have good friends. It's yeah, good man. to have good friends who don't Walter. forget about you. Still show love. Yeah, that's still dope. Are dope to see. There to support you. I just hope those same friends are there to support to make sure he never ends up in prison again. Right, because a couple of the lyrics were a little bit questionable, and I'm not a snitch. So next topic. I mean, the lyrics are going to be what the lyrics are, right? Like the lyrics totally contradict everything you everything just went you through. just went through, my man. Why are you saying double the price? What? Okay. So God I mean, bless. it is. I mean, it is. But that's the music, though, right? Like, you just got to hope it's the art, and right? pray yeah. that there is an intersection between him producing music and content based on his experiences in life and hope that that's not his current experience in his current life. You just got to hope, right? Because like we see Casanova get picked up, we see G Herbo get picked up for, uh, for different allegations. And, you know, you just, you just hope that these guys are around for a long time to give us, you know, really good content, really good music, but also live long lives. That's the hope, man. Listen, the hope is anybody who's out there and involved in this life is to stay alive, stay safe. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like that's all we really want. Keep doing what you're doing. You Big know facts. What I'm saying? But just stay safe because it's been a rough year. It's been a tough year. I know we're gonna hit the recap. Um, so I don't know if you want to hit the recap now, but if you do, I have. Oh, a you had to hear um, some stuff about Lamelo, Lamelo Ball. You want to hit that in sports? We can hit that. Uh, in we sports. can hit that in sports. We can hit that in sports. Um, okay, for sure. But uh, yeah, I think th- I think off the fact that we want people to stay safe, stay alive mm-hmm. this year, we can go into 2020, and we know it's been a crazy, crazy year. Um, mm-hmm. And let's recap, man, what we got. Absolutely. So um, before we get into like the news stories that are the news stories, I wanted us to recap our 2020. You know, what was 2020 like for Trevor and Josh? What was 2020 like for Josh and Trevor? Like how how did they navigate the minefield, the forest? The treacherous waters. Oh, I didn't know you wanted to talk about that. Let's talk about the that. mountaintops, man. The jagged road things, the mud, the ice, the snow, the tundra of 2020. Yo, we we in, indirectly, man. We kind of got through 2020 together, man, which is kind of crazy. Like pause, but mm-hmm. whatever. Like you know what I mean? Like we were <laughs> we just started up at the top of the year recording the podcast. Like just on yes. some. On some nimble, come through, come rap. That was that, and that was like magic at, at you know what I mean on the first record, and Indeed. and um, boom, COVID happens. Right, we go right into March, and COVID happens, and we just don't even know what to expect. And I think mm-hmm. twenty twenty was a year that like, you know, you kick off every year, and you want like great things to accomplish, great things. I knew I was turning thirty this year. Um, so I knew mm-hmm. that like this was gonna be a milestone year for me, and I just wanted it to be special. But like man plans and 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 God laughs, but like his laughter is you know it, it's it's I can honestly just testify like it's full with blessings behind it. And if you just kind of rock through, 
Um, mm-hmm. It's going to be ugly days and there's going to be good days. But and I think that's just life in general. Whether you believe in a higher power or not, there's just going to be highs and lows. And I think 2020 was a real depiction of highs and lows. And it's stripped down to what's important, right? And... Like for me, I can say I, I took away that what's important is family. What's important is like real, like meaningful friendships and relationships. Um, mm-hmm. Chasing my dreams is important to me. Like my mental health is important to me. I found therapy this year. I found my physical health this year. I found love. Like I'm engaged. Like I moved. I relocated. Like so 2020 can be what you make it, right? It wasn't a good by any means. Like I, like I have a lot of bad I can talk about, but I don't mm-hmm. want to talk about that because a lot of, like a lot of bad for everyone. But what I could do is highlight the things that I am grateful for in this year, and that's what I'm going to do. So thank you, cool. man, for for for, uh, for just rocking with me throughout the entire year because honestly, like, we were, we did this every month. Like, every month we checked in, at least. Mm-hmm. And that was important, you know, just to even, just to wrap through it. So that's my Absolutely. Um, do you have, like, a specific 2020 highlight? Yeah, man, I think my two highlights would be probably um, the first one, uh, September 5th, proposed to Kim. Made her my fiance. Um, so that was Drop my fucking phone again. What is wrong with Drop me? Drop the phone, but I got the snaps over here. I'll, I'll just snap until you come back, you know? Just snap until, ah. you, snap until you come back. Okay. Um, so that was a highlight for me, proposing to my fiance, man, and just restarting our lives down here in South Florida, which has been amazing. Um, and then probably because of COVID, put on a good unhealthy 40 pounds. And I lost mm-hmm. that. Um, so, like, I'm super proud of that. And just refounding, like, my passion to just maintain my physical goals. So that would be my two accomplishments for the year and two highlights. Personally. Awesome. What about you? Awesome. Highlights for 2020. Hmm. You went with two, so I'll go with two also. Um, I mean, highlight definitely, like, you know, meeting the person that I'm with right now. That okay. wouldn't it wouldn't have happened without COVID. Honestly, shout out to COVID, no. right? Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, um, that wouldn't happen. I wouldn't be in the position that I am with Nat right now. You know, with her, you know, planning a life together, um, and you know, all the great things that have that have come along with that. Beautiful. Um, the other highlight, man. What other? I mean, this. I mean, I feel really selfish because I feel like 2020. Of course, it's been you know a struggle, but I feel like I've been blessed. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, um, you know, I've been blessed with you know, luckily. Nobody close to me has succumbed to this virus. Um, and I think that's like one of the, the biggest things like I think about daily because like I have elderly grandparents. Yeah. Uh, my mom's on the front lines going to work at Bellevue every day and like stayed healthy. Um, right, right. Dad has like health issues and he stayed healthy. So... It's 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 been like a, a combination of like you know finding the person that I that I intend on being with and then also um, just like having the the leverage to like and the thing is like we were around each other a lot because we weren't really vibing with being just around like random people during yeah. this um, this virus this pandemic so I would I would say I would you know note those as my highlights and then also just like the way that I've been able to just navigate like through fitness and. Do like little different hustles to to keep the lights on, um, to make sure that I'm you know still the person that I need to be for myself, um, for my lady, for my family, for everybody that I need to be a person for. Beautiful. Um, just grateful for those things. Yeah, man. I Absolutely. Think that's, I think I love that word. Um, if, if if there's one thing that 2020 has challenged me to be more of, and it's just more of a grateful person, just for just the small things that we have and all the things that we take for granted. Um, mm-hmm. and, and in a year like 2020, when you, when you're removed from everything that you're comfortable with, everyone is, 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 is been uncomfortable this year. Like just about every single person, like even something like this, like Cristiano Ronaldo, so rich, so famous, so whatever. He was so uncomfortable that he had to move to an, he, he chose to move to an Island. Right. So he uncomfortable though. Right. Like even on that level. So like everyone mm-hmm. was, was affected by this. So, yeah. So of course, like that's how we got through 2020. Um, you know, together potting as a unit. And there, of course, like were a bunch of different news stories. 2020 was a year unlike any other when it came to current events and stories that that rocked the world. Um, of course, what we just talked about a little while ago, COVID-19 becoming a thing that killed in just in America alone a quarter of a million people. 
uh, continues to infect people daily. And, you know, we are at a point right now where we have a vaccination that everybody should take. Uh huh. So, um, yeah, that's that's I mean, that has to be like the biggest story of 2020. Like, how is it, uh, I guess, like affected? Like, how have you like felt about COVID? Because I know we've had like so many discussions about it over the over the past year. Um, COVID has been tough to just kind of process. Right. And I guess the effects of COVID has also been hard to process, like the effects on works, the effects on the economy, the effects on families, the effects on gatherings, um, the effects on your health, right? It's just very, it's just a lot of different, like the rules, the regulations, the restrictions, the touch this, t- don't touch that, the wear a mask, don't wear a mask, the, like you can social distance, you could, you could be in a spot, like the, it's just been a lot, very difficult to navigate. We don't know if we're allowed to be in places or not. Can we be at full capacity or not? Should we, should we not? Like, there's just so many different things. And so, like, for me, COVID has just been, a cl- like, a clusterfuck and very, very confusing to just navigate. With that being said, um, you kind of had, like, I kind of just had to roll with the punches, man. Every single day, you just, I, d- I don't know what happens tomorrow, in a sense. Yeah. We, we make a plan, and we plan for it, and we try to execute it. But we have to also know that the plans could very much so change. And that's what COVID really is, like... Things will consistently change every day. Yeah, it's and because we don't know. it's it, it forces you to be adaptable and adaptable. be resourceful. Um, and it it does suck that we're going through a pandemic and we have the type of president that we have that you know instills no confidence yeah, <laughs> in like, in the fact on? that there's a solution coming or that there is any type of you know he just lacks empathy, right? And you you can't have a president that lacks empathy during a pandemic where people are dying. That those two just don't go together or don't go together well, at least. Yeah. Um, second story, we had the death of Kobe Bryant earlier this year. Jeez. Uh, we did a lot of conversations on, on the death of Kobe Bryant, not just a basketball player, but a, a cultural icon. You know, when the news dropped, it was, you know, my phone was buzzing. I'm hitting people up to make sure the news is actually real and checking TV, checking all kinds of news sources. Uh, something that hit a lot of not just like, I mean, anybody in our age range, it hit really hard because we've seen Kobe from teenager to to dad, you know, to girl dad. Yeah, we uh, Kobe is Kobe. Kobe is forever Kobe. It's forever Kobe for me. Um, yeah. Always. Uh, truly tragic, man, to lose him so soon. He was doing so many great things just post-basketball being such a amazing presence. I remember... Um, one of my favorite, I guess, post Kobe moments um, after his retirement was when he tweeted everyone before the season and just challenged niggas. He just mm. challenged niggas that he believed in, and that was just like truly like what we were in store for, man. We had an OG that was still tapped in, right? Like yep. that was still connected with the young crowd. He had the Mamba Academy, man. And and a lot of the young players who are going to the Mamba Academy, you just fall in love with because like they're learning from the best, man. The Kyrie's, the Jordan Clarkson's, uh, you know what I mean? Like it was Jason Tatum's, the Greek freaks. Mm-hmm. Like these are like young Kobe prodigies, man. So yeah. it's a beautiful to see that he really is going to live. He's eternal. He's going to live forever. Um, but that was like that was tough for me. I remember, like I, it, it it hit me hard, man. It was an emotion I couldn't even really process. Because like in one spectrum, I'm like, yo, it's someone I never, well, I, I did meet him before, but like it's someone I don't really have a relationship with. Should I be feeling this way? But it's just like, yo, someone I've also looked to my entire life. I should yeah. feel this way. So now I'm conflicted and like, I, like let it out, right? Um, so crazy, man, to lose Kobe, but he's going to live forever, man. Absolutely. Um, forever. I think what you say about uh, him connecting with the younger players, he kind of bridged that old school 90s basketball with the millennials yeah because he played against patrick ewing and charles yeah. barkley and uh carl malone and, and john gave him stockton work. and then also he's a he's a, a lebron contemporary yeah. he's a kd contemporary yeah. he's a Kyrie contemporary he like he's there. he bridged he, he bridged them. those gaps and each era has so much respect for his game and even more respect for his work ethic um so so I, so I think that is probably like the biggest reason why 
it hurt so much when yeah. him and his daughter tragically passed away unexpectedly in February. And the so. GG, she was next thing up on a, in the hoop circuit, just doing her thing naturally, and not even like yeah. that was the beauty thing to watch Gigi work. It was like, yo, she's getting she's 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 hooping really really well. She understands the game really really well, and mm -hmm. this is a, uh, I, be, I believe that women's basketball is a little bit more technical. Um, then yeah, you gotta you have, be. You have to be a lot more technical. Your fundamentals have to be a lot more sound. Your understanding of the game has to be more sound, a lot more strategic. It's, it's more like chess for them, um, mm -hmm. in, in in some ways. Um, and they and they're and they're a lot smarter when they hoop. And we were watching Gigi work that out. Like she was working like a mamba on the court, mm -hmm. and their whole team was too, man. So just shout out to them. Shout out to their family. To Vanessa, right now she's going through some. Some nasty mess with her mom yeah, right nasty. now. That's nasty, nasty, you know? And we just, and like, who mm -hmm. needs that? Like, my husband's still fresh in the ground this year. Yeah. I don't need this right now. You want some bread? Right? Yeah, so, it's, it's, I. So that's what 2020, like, that's, that's, what, yeah. that's what 2020 is, though, that's right? That's what 2020 it's, brings, it's that right? That's kind of year, right? It's just ugly inside and out, man. Very. Um, what else you got for us in this year? Uh, I'm just, shit, this is a very sad list. <laughs> this list is, Jeez, this list man. is sad as shit. <laughs> Yo, and, uh, and that's the year, man. That's the year. Yeah. Do you want to take it down? Do you want to hit the re like? Do we do we want to hit the, the the negatives or do we want it? What can nah, we let's talk do it. about? Let's do it. It, it was, it's the year. It's the year recap. Right? This is it's what happened. Year. Can't avoid it, right? We'll, um, we'll put a bow on it at the end, though. We'll put a bow on it at the end. Absolutely. We got to put a bow. Um. So of course, like the the death the, the murder of George let's, Floyd let's and Breonna Taylor. Though. Let's breeze them. Yeah, I know. I know because I'm because I'm gonna get angry. I'm gonna get angry. Um, <laughs> the murder of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor, and then the, like the subsequent worldwide protest that followed. Um, just another others. reminder. Countless yeah. others this year, man. Just just, just the police brutality. So those are two that 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 we literally like just said. Oh, we had enough. But there's been before and there's been after there's been this yeah. year and there's been years before so to all those who've lost their lives to police brutality man we truly like our hearts go with you your families especially around this holiday season like, yeah there was just a huge season. you know outcry of police for police reform for accountability yeah, uh for all the things that you know black men and women have been crying out for for the past 200 or 300 years um so it was all like brought to a head. You know, I got the opportunity with my family to go to the March on Washington. Big time, big time, um, big time. Big, and, big and be year in the to company. It, yeah. This be is in a the memory. company of so many people that were just that just wanted their voices heard and wanted to show people around the world, hey, like this is not okay. Yeah. And until it becomes okay, this is what we're going to do every yeah. single day. And we I like lent a that. lot of coverage to it. Um and it was really important that we did. I think I think that's actually big. I love that you actually circle back to bring that up because as we think about it, right, like um, back in the day when we were in history and we would go through civil rights movements and we'll see these like retro black and white pictures of of of, of these of these protests and these similar movements to the one to the march you went to this year, and we're like, damn, like imagine what it's like to be there. And our dog, you were there this year, man. And yeah. you were part of one of the biggest movements of 2020, the one of the biggest movements in African American history. And in five, ten years, when your kids are in school talking about these this year and how crazy it was, you can legit say, yo, me and you know what I mean? Yeah, we, we were there. We were there. Me and your mom were there. We me were and your mom were there. We lived it. Um yeah. we saw this. We 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 stood for this. So I wanted to salute to you because this wasn't an easy year to pop out and do that. It wasn't a safe year to pop out and do that health wise or just safety yeah. wise. So yeah, and I remember telling move, you this also. Like everybody was masked up. Mm -hmm. Things was not playing games. Everybody was masked up, and that was the yeah. Thing. It was like that. that was, like I think what makes that moment so big in history was that it was bigger than what was. It was bigger than a national pandemic. Yes, like at that moment, like the pandemic was also at its height. Like we still were technically just coming out of lockdown. But at that mm -hmm. moment, what was going on was so crucial, so important for voices to be heard, for faces to, to be happen. seen. It had to happen. Mask to happen. on, we here. And y'all showed out, man. That's big. How many people? Oh, it was over half a million. Over half a mil, dog. In D.C., man. Yeah. And it wasn't for over no... Over half a million. It wasn't for Howard Homecoming. <laughs> you feel me? <laughs> Even though that thing go up, though. That thing go up, though, boy. That is hilarious. Um... And then next up, of course, the presidential election drama where the current president still thinks he's going to be president. 
um, after January twentieth. Um, yeah, that's cool. It, it's 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 still a, it's still a wild thing to see this stuff unfold. It really is to like not acknowledge votes, not acknowledge that he's not president anymore. Scream, go to court, um, talk shit about other mayors and governors about how their elections and their their voting boards are fraudulent. It's just crazy. 2020 in a nutshell. Honestly. 2020 in a nutshell. Here's what I can say. My, my 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 true honest thoughts on this election, man, is that America showed its ass this year. More than more than the last election. Like this year, America makes right? Cause like I feel like in twenty six in twenty sixteen it was like, yo, like, no way America can 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 want this guy. Yeah, right. they can't fuck this up, right? Yeah. All right, fine. And he got they fucked want him. up. And then he gave us four years and showed us exactly his like who he is as a person. So then we go into the second election and we're like, yo, no way can America want this guy again, right? And America showed their asses again in a stronger, in a stronger just um stance with some of the wrong things that he 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 stands for and presents. So for me, this election, this debate really just kind of and we talked about this plain times on the podcast, just showed us like, damn, like the people that we sit down and eat with. This is how they feel sometimes. More, people, more, more times, more than times less. than not, right? The people that like that we've sp- spent times and, and and hours with feel a certain way about the things that like definitely feel different than we feel about. I don't know, black lives, right? And human so, like, rights, human rights, and just what's right and what's wrong and moral stance. So this year was a year where, like, hey, this is what this is where we live, okay? And this is how people really move. And I hope you see it. And do what you want with that information. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, we got Chadwick Boseman and Pop Smoke's death. Um, the Chadwick Boseman death's super surprising. Nobody knew he was battling stage four cancer. And then the Pop Smoke death, violence, again, uh, claims the life of a young black man on his way up, uh, you know, perfecting his craft. Um, just two, I, at least for me, I put those two down because they were very just like jarring yeah. and shocking yeah. Yeah. Um, for the year. Um, um, rest in peace to the Wu. Uh, rest in peace to the Big Wu. Pop Smoke man really fell in love with the kid. Really just fell in love with his album. Um, Kim and I were talking, and this is kind of like a wild take, but like it's actually kind of real take because this is this is how like history works, right? So, um, Pop gave us an album, and then and then Pop died, and it, mm-hmm. the album happened to be really really good. He solidified in history in Brooklyn history for the rest of his life. He's a Brooklyn. He's a Brooklyn, Brooklyn legend now, right? And Absolutely. I think that's, and I think that's the beauty of, of death. Sometimes, like we have to find the beauty in things. And so this young kid is immortalized. He's, he he is a Brooklyn legend for sure. We remember him. He's you mentioned earlier in this podcast. He's a forefather of this sound, and people can run with it, right? So rest in peace to Pop Smoke, and thank you for just the small sacrifice and the small gift that you gave us on your time here at Earth, you know. And then Ch- losing Chadwick Boseman, a great up and coming actor in the African American just scene. Like we just, he was our hero. He was our Black Panther. He Black was, Panther. He was he our was, Marvel hero. He was the next. He was he was the next up. He's just, he was crushing everything he was doing, and he has such an amazing heart and amazing attitude. Um, so we lost a king. We lost a good one. We lost another legend. So I love the two names that you highlighted, and to everyone else that we lost in this year in our community, whether it be through COVID. Health and sicknesses, um, police brutality, just prayers, prayers up, man, in this in this holiday season. Absolutely. Um, with the Chadwick, Chadwick Boseman thing, one thing I just want to like say to close that out is he spent his career playing icons, like playing like black icons, uh, people that had like a complicated history, like James Brown, people who had like a heroic history, like Jackie Robinson. You know, like it, it was it was a his fictional fictional hero. Like he played, icons. yeah, he, and and then and then like encompassing being Black Panther, you know, yeah. being this uh, this this king like figure of this this fantastical African um, African nation. So he spent his life, and then knowing going through the things he was going through, like doing his best to get out our art and our figures and put them in the best light and do the best job of make portraying their good. greatness that he could. Yeah, I and mean, that is something to be admired. That's Absolutely. that's admirable. I love that. That's a great take, actually, because that's yeah. literally what his life was. And so, like, you look another person, just another legend. Because when we mm-hmm. go back to tap into like who was Jackie Robinson, and like, oh, there's a Jackie Robinson movie, and look, look yep. who's who's that? Oh, that's Chadwick. Like these these are things that are with us for years, man. And I think that's 
what's beauty about the things that we're chasing, right? Entertainment, podcasting, and just like leaving a lasting impact, right? We have an opportunity mm -hmm. to leave a lasting impact amongst our community, not on a great scale as they are, but on a small scale within our networks. And I think that's like the beauty of platforms and being able to use it. So Chadwick exhausted his platforms, man. It, Absolutely. It's truly really amazing. Um, so we're going to get to some more some positive stuff. Woo, that was tough. Um, the verses versus battles were born out of COVID. Two artists, either R&B or hip-hop, get together on Instagram Live. They go hit for hit. They perform. They give backstories. They, give, they educate us on how certain albums yeah. and songs were birthed. Just something that's become a part of culture. the culture. The culture. Yeah, <laughs> dude. Um, culture what, what was your favorite verses? Uh, Beanie Man. Mm. That, was, that, was, that had to be mine. Um, that's the one I can honestly say like I tapped in for um, Beanie Man and Bon Tequila. Uh, it was mm -hmm. dope. And what that meant for Jamaica and what that meant for just the Caribbean in general. Um, there were so many things that came from that, right? There was unity. There was just like strength in numbers. No, like yeah. it, it didn't matter how big the island of Jamaica was. They had the world on tilt, right? Like so, like yes. that was just a dope moment for Jamaica and just for Caribbean culture for me. Um, so for them to just kind of like tap into what was happening here in the states and be a part of that, amazing, dope. Amazing. Yeah, it was you? great. It was dope. I got two. So my my first is going to be Jeezy Gucci, okay, just because okay. of the impact. And okay. the music, of course. Yeah, yeah. And then my second is going to be Erica Badu and Jill Scott. Oh, you got into your sage bag. You got into your vibes Kyrie on vibes big, big on bag. vibes. No, I'm not burning sage, but vibes on vibes on vibes. It was just amazing evening. Like they were just so open with the origins of their art. They were just really. It was cool to see two women just complimentary show complimentary and show love to each other. That's and a surprise. It was. We're not going to do that. <laughs> I don't think we're new. I think in 2021, we got to get, get some more like female nuance on the show because it can't just be us because we don't know shit, apparently. Um, Sips tea. <laughs> and then, of course, like we had a few artists in 2020, right? And this is your bag because I don't really listen to these niggas. Um, I still, I'm still listening to some music from, you know, 2002. Let me hear what you got for me. We got Lil Baby. We got Meg the Stallion. Big Lil Baby guy. We Big got the um we got the Griselda movement. We got Roddy Rich. We got the weekend. We got Bad Bunny from our for all our Latin. We don't Big have any Latin Bad Bunny guy too. We don't have any we don't have any Latin listeners. Uh Dude, for all Kim my Latin, Latin listeners. Kim is Latin. Huh? Kim is oh Latin. yeah, that's right. Yes, yes, we, we got, have one yo, we Latin got a listener. Couple Latins, yo. We got a couple We got Latins. one Latin. We got two. I can think of let me think of. Shout out to all my Latin listeners. Shout out to Nikki Sooks. Shout out to I can think of five. We have five Latin listeners. Yes. We have more. Mi gente. Um, Mi gente. <laughs> Mi gente. <laughs> uh, we got Bad Bunny and who had a huge year. And then I didn't put it down, but also um, baby had a huge year putting out content and putting out music. He had the best year. You think baby had the best year? <laughs> it's based on our last conversation. Um <laughs> <laughs> No, nah, he actually he's has very, he's, he, he's closing out 2020 very strong. Yeah, he's finishing out 2020 great, man. Very strong, indeed. Red Lambo, wow, right? <laughs> <laughs> Red Lambo and a boat. Okay. Uh, <laughs> clearly sick. <laughs> um, no, man. We had, yo, through the pandemic, we had some great music, man. Um, I uh, Actually, you know what? Since we're on it, give me... Uh, off the top of your head, just real quick, give me your favorite album of the year, your favorite song of the year, and your favorite mm. artist this year. Go. Favorite album has to be King's Disease uh, by Nas. Okay. Um, Such a queen's booger. Close, you, se close second is going to be... Um, yes. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> close second is going to be um, Benny's Burn and Proof okay. for album. Two albums um, of the year. Um, boom Bat. Uh, uh, boom Bat Bag. Song, <laughs> <laughs> song of the year. I don't know if I really have a song of the year. Um, you give me give me your album. Well, I don't know. Do you listen to albums? I do. I see. So, 
I, ironically enough, I am an album guy. Okay. That's like how I um, that's how I give it up. I, I listen to albums when they drop. So if mm-hmm. I look at my um, <laughs> my Instagram just got me. Oh, tight. it's funny. I I think I know what my song of the year is. You're gonna think it's hilarious. What's your song of the year? I think my song of the year is "Laugh Now, Cry Later." <laughs> We're Drake. just gonna, st- you know what? And a little Ooh, dirt. I don't even have to talk to you about anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you like that one. Sometimes you laugh, sometimes you cry. It's a great because it's a. I told you, like I, f- I feel like it's a diss song. To who? To Kanye. I feel like "Laugh Now, Cry Later" is a play on his bipolar situation. Uh, he says, "We on your block, you ain't there." They used to live really close together. Kanye's not on the block. I feel like it's just a very like I'm deep again. seated you know, diss song. If you listen to all the lyrics, it's a really really like scathing review of who Kanye West is as a person. So that's why I like it so much. That's why you like it. That's why I love it, honestly. Um, what what would, as far as album of the year, what would uh, what would your um, your ears tell you? What was what uh, what audio adventure did you um, set out to you? <laughs> Yo, why are you discrediting just my ears? Why, I'm not. Why I'm is not. the why is the intro? Um, I think my my album of the year would probably be um, Pop Smoke's album this year. Okay, good choice. All right, shoot for the stars, aim for the moon. Um, mm-hmm. That would be my album of the year. My song, I got a couple of songs, man. I like, and I don't know if it like. I don't know if it's going to be. It's probably Little Baby All In. I okay. Love that, I love that one. That little that gets me going. Um, and then, uh, the world we created by Jivion. That's a good one. Okay. That one hits for Kim and I. Uh, I like Jivion. His voice is a little. It's cool. Different. It's different. It's cool. But it's it, but different. here's the thing. He's a sad boy. So like <laughs> when I popped the second album, I'm like, nigga, I am not sad. I got a fiance. Like she's a little different. Like I'm not really in this bag, but I like your music. I mean, 2020, I mean, I mean, I say I want to say since like maybe 2018, the sad vibe songs have been very popular. Yeah, but like not to get your bitch back, because I don't need to do that. <laughs> like that's not my lane. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Didn't think so. I didn't um, need to do that. And also I yeah. think I think the song of the year though really really and truly is Chris Brown go crazy bring it back bring it back bring it back bring it back. It's a good song. That's a good. It's a good song. That's it's a, good a very good song. I like Heat better though. I think Heat is dope. You a freak man. Was Heat 2020? Yeah, last year. It was 2019. Okay, my bad. Yeah, yeah. yeah go crazy is dope. Go crazy, go is, crazy dope. is dope. Um, very underrated Juicy J's album. Juicy J's cool. Uh, that came out a few weeks ago. It is fire. I gotta find the name of it. I'm just like I sitting right here, here saying random I have it things. Right here for you. Yeah. Juicy J's album is well, the hustle, hustle continues. continues. Whoa, yeah. Jinx, you know what I mean? Also, also, album is fire. Jack Harlow's album, not bad. Next album will be even <laughs> better. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. It, like he has shit to work with. It's not good. It's not the best. But I think next album, if he if he matures, because his contact needs to be a little bit more mature, it'll be he'll be he'll be good because he can rap. But he, his, he can content, rap. His, his content to me is a little bit like I'm 30. <laughs> I'm 30, 30 I mean, year. they don't make, like I said, they don't make music for people. Over, that, that's what you're going to understand in your 30s. That they niggas make music ain't making first. music for you. Uh, okay. That's like why my last two takes were so negative. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, all oh, these damn kids rapping about bitches and shit. And I'm just, bitches and hoes. <laughs> bitches and hoes. Oh. I, I like women. I like grow up. Give me a grown woman. Give me a yeah. grown woman, yeah. When you as the older you get into your thirties, you'll realize these niggas are not making music for you. Because they know you're not paying for it. Yeah, <laughs> so they know facts. that you're not gonna do it. Big Women shit. are gonna pay for it and young niggas are gonna pay for it, not you. Yeah. Fact. Um Indeed. Who is your who okay, who is your woman of the year? Is it Meg? Excuse me? Is my Meg? woman of the year is my woman. That's my woman of the year. <laughs> You are, you are, you are media trained. <laughs> this thing, this thing was flabbergasted. Whoa, whoa, yo, what, what? Another woman? Excuse me? No, my question. <laughs> the man in the room, like, hello. Kim in the what? other room, like, yo. <laughs> um, so you mean like artists, like female artist of the year? Yeah, basically. Actually, let me just ask you the real question that I wanted to get to. Do you think Meg is gonna make it next year? I think Absolutely. Meg looks great. I think Meg looks great. Meg is to the moon. Like Meg is, and Meg has Meg some is good. really good moves. 
Really good moves, really good music, really good production the behind music. her. She's got a machine behind her. Like, like the body, last yaddy, album was yaddy, mediocre. Yaddy, 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 yaddy. I mean, after the after the third Adi, I'm good. Okay, copy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like a few albums, Revenge of the Dreamers, Dreamville, that was dope. Savage Mode 2 is my shit. I only like 21 Savage and Metro Boomin. I gotta say that whole thing. I don't I, I got I haven't really spoken. It's really good. Uh, I'll just, I'll Mr. Right now next. is yeah, dope. Right. Um that's another Drake on, feature. Hold on, slow down, man. Don't try to breeze Stepping over on that. niggas. Don't try is to dope. breeze over that. You just two of the top songs this year that you like have Drake features. That's yes, they do. Talk about it. Doesn't it doesn't take away my opinion of him <laughs> as a <laughs> good save. Good save. It doesn't remove my opinion of him as, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, picking low hanging fruit when it comes yeah, to music. Sure, whatever, no problem, dude. It doesn't. No problem. That's that's just that's yeah, that's just that's how true. it is. That's cool. Uh, that's so crazy. I think that's twenty twenty. I think that's like a twenty twenty recap. Okay, then I guess I mean, and when are we recording our next pod? Um, let's shoot for. Are we giving them anything? January. The year? F- let's go January fourth. All right, cool. So then we'll talk about our plans for the new year in the, in the, in the in the next pod. Absolutely. Um, Indeed. The next week, I'll give you guys the best of. A um, couple of things, man. A couple of things. NBA yeah. starts tomorrow. That's exciting. <laughs> Big That's ups, exciting. man. We're going to have so much content to talk about. <laughs> We're going to have to extend our sports segment a little bit. This is going to have to be like a separate separate like sports sports recap. Yeah, we'll do like a, a sports recap at the end of the week. We'll talk about guys like LaMelo Ball. Is he the early rookie of the year? Bro, he passed this ball the other day. I He's not going to be the rookie of the yeah, year. Yeah, okay. Yo, I never seen a uh, – put it right we'll put here. put money on it? Uh, yeah, put it right here. Steak dinners. What's up? On LaMelo Ball being rookie of the year. Yeah, put, uh, steak dinners. Yeah, I want it. Okay, cool. Got it. But no, 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 actually, no, hold on. Sorry, sorry, slow down, slow down. Hold on. <laughs> There's too many rookies against this thing. You have to give me one person that it is going to be. And if it's Anthony neither, Edwards. Okay, cool. Shake. Done deal. Close. Anthony Edwards in Minnesota. Yeah. Number one pick. Looking at. He, he does looks look, very. He, he looks really good. He looks polished. Yeah. That's, how, that's what he looks like when he plays. Yeah. Like his, his shot. Um, his handle, he looks very polished. Yeah, and very he got complete. some shit. He got some shit, but we ain't gonna yeah. see him nowhere though. We might see Charlotte though. We might see Charlotte. See Charlotte where? We might see Charlotte fighting for the for the AFC. We might see Charlotte fighting for the AFC. I promise you, they, they were in the contending last year, bro. It's not crazy. And they have they're not fighting Hayward. for shit. Okay, Gordon we'll see. Hayward is. Yeah, all right. Gordon Hayward is is their we'll number see. one guy. We'll see, we got, he's there to win a championship. This is good. This is good uh, stuff. Is there to win? There to win there's games. There's a balance. Giannis signs a max extension. <laughs> all I want to do is win. R- Rudy Gobert, another max extension. Let's just tap. Oh, on that's it real nuts. Quick. That Rudy, Ka- that Rudy deal is you don't insane. like that? Insane, huh? He's a two time defensive player of the year. What don't you like I, about I, that? I think. I think. What, what you like about I had that? this. I I had this like this theory about fans in Utah. Fans in Utah don't need a championship. That's, you don't ever hear about oh, their fan. Oh, you're a Nick fan. You don't know. You don't ever hear. No, I'm, that has nothing to do with this. You don't ever everything. hear about. Why don't they deserve no, it to have a championship? No, I'm saying they don't want it. They don't need it. Oh, they don't need I'm it. Not saying, I'm okay. not saying they don't need it. I'm saying as a fan of a Utah Jazz, yeah. I am happy with my team making the playoffs, winning a few playoff series, and just being good guys in the community. You not, That's you it as a Utah speak, fan. You can't, speak, you can't speak for Utah. There's Mormons out there. You can't speak for the Mormons. I can speak for Utah fans. You cannot. You cannot. I can go by. I can Nigga, go by you their are history. A Nick fan. You cannot speak for. I can Utah. go by their history. Yo, they're, they're, they almost they're, beat the Lakers. They are very content. They were content with Stockton and Malone. Stockton and Malone. Stockton and Malone. All those years in the playoffs, no championships, no nothing. Yeah. Only two finals appearances. You, I, you know who you're talking years. like? You're talking like PG right now. That's a PG bar because PG said what? his interview the same thing about Indiana. He said they're very content with just making the playoffs, and that very much that's might cool. be, and that's cool. That might be and they true, might be, but I don't think so with Utah this this time around. That's why you that's why you signed Donovan and 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 that Donovan and Rudy are not Carmelo and Stockton. You're right, they're better. Yeah, so I think it's a but little guess different. Who's, but guess who's in the West right now? I know, but at least they can, at least they're playing. At least they're like I like what you got to do. Doing. You got to do your shit to win. That's it. Like I feel like signing Rudy Gobert to a two hundred million dollar deal that is oh, going to expire teams too. when In he's head, when he's thirty three years old, and he and like he's defensive player of the year. But who is he guarding in the West? Is he guarding Jokic? No. Is he guarding AD? No. Is he guarding Nurkic? No. Facts. These are all facts. These are all facts. 
But, so it's like you signed this but guy who's defensive player of the like, year. Those are weird, but, but see, here's the thing. For those 50 games. Play, those are one players you're asking him to shut down, but his impact, right, for defensive player of the year, it's really about the impact that you make on the court. Yeah. His presence alone is is a defense. Like, I'm paying 200 million for a for big man who jumps out, the, who jumps with the with the best of them sometimes. He contends jump shots. He, 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 he defends you from the paint. I like it. I like it. Listen, I'm not saying he's not a good player or he's not good at what he is. Right. But we're talking about a max player. Max player. Max Max means – we player. have learned that max means nothing. We've learned that ma- – niggas but get max for, for, for sneezing. The reason why it's a discussion Kuz is because – just got a 40 mil max. Cool. That's not a max. But that's not a max deal though. That's it's not a, a max deal. It's a max deal. for his tier. For his tier. He's in his second contract. So Rudy, Rudy's in like his third contract. So he has to get the max for that. That's how that shit goes. Like everybody well, – like well, when he's you got, get max, you get max for your tier. Boom, because boom. he has like the All NBA and the Defensive Player of the Year and the All Star. Pay that man. Somebody go pay it. that man. I get it. Who would? Who else is giving Rudy two hundred mil? Go find out. You give him two hundred mil because somebody else wants to give him two hundred mil. You give him two hundred mil because you don't want to let him go. That's why you give. I know him you don't want to let him go, and I don't think you should. Right. But I'm looking at the overall impact of. I just gave this guy two hundred million dollars. Will he help me get a championship? And the answer is probably no. Potentially, I potentially. If it, listen, when, at one point do you see the Utah Jazz winning a championship? I don't. I exactly. Don't. But I'm. Uh, but they're contenders. Exactly. And, and, and they're contenders. And they could. and they will get a lot of playoff games, and, they and that'll could. drive a lot of revenue for the owner. It ain't who's fair with Bron in, in in the West now. And it the fans fair. will show up because they're content with being in the playoffs. It ain't fair. It ain't fair to to to. to it, it must suck, right? It must suck to sit down as a as a GM every year and 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 say I'm a I'm a just give away this free money, even though Braun in the West. That sucks. It's that been sucks. that way in the West for a while, though. It's never I been know, fair because first it was Shaq and Kobe, then you got Tim Duncan and Manu and Tony Parker, and um, like right after that you got Kobe again, Kobe and Pal, and it's now tough, you got man. LeBron and AD. It's tough in the West. Everybody Everyone's else is just like playing for second though. place. Who, who, who's your, who's your take for the East coming out of the East? Talk to me. Season's about to start. Give me one take from the East. Who you got? Is Brooklyn the real deal? Should we be worried? I don't know yet. Should we be worried about uh, Brooklyn? I think we should yeah, I think be we should. worried about. Uh, I don't know. They look good in preseason, but it's preseason, right? Here's my they, And they're moving the rock. They're moving the rock. That's what I've seen also. It's not just been a one-on-one show with KD and Kyrie. Um, they got Spencer so Dinwiddie. Think, they got Levert off the bench. They yeah. got a bench. They got they got Joe Harris. Levert's shooting. a monster. I, I like um, them. I do like them also. The more I, the more I think about it, I like them a lot. I like them, but, I but then I also think about Harden. what'd you say? I don't want them to trade for James Harden. No, they shouldn't. They shouldn't. Neither should they um, lose Tyler Hero for James Harden either. Shout out to Nick. He doesn't want me. He doesn't want that to happen. You should wait. You just said the Heat. Should hold on a Tyler Hero instead of getting no, James it was like, Harden. No, no, it's, it's 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 more people. It's more people. No, yeah. I understand that, but I feel like Tyler Hero would be like the centerpiece because he's young. Uh, I don't know. I don't even know what that trade looks like. It was, it was posted on the thing, but either way, I think yeah. that, I think what the Heat, I think what the Heat have right now, like you, bro, James Harden ain't been to the finals. We don't need James Harden. Essentially, and he's a little hefty right now. Also, he's a two XL. Shout out to Nick. He's really a little chunky. Little chunks. Little so. Chunky. It's tough. I, I get it. It's but tough, right? That's, that's that's a trade Pat Riley makes in his like in his sleep I, with one hand, you? like scratching his ass. Do you? Absolutely. Do you? If all you got to give up, if you're if the centerpiece of the, what you're giving up is Tyler Hero for James Harden, you no, make I, that I, deal. I think, I think I think somebody else is. I, I look to see. I mean, you don't give up Bam. I don't think right, you ever give up Bam. Say. I don't think you give up. You can't give up Jimmy. Nobody's. I mean, nobody can afford Jimmy right now. Um. Who else do they have down there that's a young stud? Uh, but I feel like everybody else is like up for grabs. Tyler Hero's up for grabs. Um, and anybody else that they want to throw in there for salary reasons. And trade and trade picks. You know, like James, listen, no, James Harden is an all-time great player. He is an all-time great player. Does James Harden mesh well with Jimmy B? Probably because Jimmy B is cool with falling and fall in the backseat. But I don't think so. Right? So like, No, because James Harden doesn't work as hard. That's what I'm saying. So like, and I, we that, should actually talk about. <laughs> yeah, you. So we, I have that story on our on our outline about all the shit that James Harden would do uh, with off days and staying in cities that he likes an extra night and just being the guy that is okaying all the different personnel changes and trades. And if he doesn't like it, he's a child about it. And there's this one quote in this article that I like. It says, um, 
It says, yeah, he's going to act up, said a former, a former Rocket staffer. He's never heard no before. So whose fault is that if he's never heard no before? Is that James's fault or is that the organization's fault? Whose fault, if, if James Harden's your child and you never told him no, whose fault is it? It's the parents. There it is. Exactly. Yeah, there it is. There it is. There so it the is. first time that y'all were on a road trip and y'all were in Vegas and James was like, nah, let's stay an extra night. You should have said no. And if you didn't want to be a part of your team after that, then it is what it is. But you set this precedent that he's going to get everything he wants. And when he doesn't, like you, everybody gets to a certain point in a job where this is going to sound fucked up. They don't have to work as hard as they did when they first started. Of course. Of course. Because you, you get equity with people, you move up, you get promotions, you get raises, shit like that. Your responsibilities change. So if one day you come into work and you got to do the same shit you did in the first day in orientation, you're going to say no. No. Nah. Nah, it's a no. It's a no. I'm with you. Fuck that. that. I'm with you. Fuck you talk. Who the fuck you talking to? Naturally. Naturally. And I also I'm, I'm dumb per- I'm, y'all trying to throw me the bag. I I it's tough, man. It's tough working with superstars, dog. But I could imagine. Here's the thing, dog. I, I this is what another thing that I've just been watching and observing. We need more niggas in the booth to tell us, yo, this shit's whack. What do you mean? I want I want people. That like I, people need more people in this circle to hold them accountable for things, right? Oh yeah, like, you're right. You know what I'm saying? So like, if James Harden's wilding, like somebody should be like, "Yo, you gotta go. To, you gotta go to X, Y, and Z." Somebody should like somebody in the group should say, "Yo, tweaking," and then you do whatever you want, what you want to do after that. But at least someone has to like hold people accountable when they're wilding. Like at the end of the day, like being a part of the Houston Rockets organization is his job. I, I I I get that perspective. Listen, like I'm always gonna side with the players. No, for sure, for sure. Always because for sure. they're millionaires, but the owners are, but the owners are billionaires. Yeah. So I'm always gonna side with the players, right? I'm so players. if James Harden decides, hey, I want to be traded, and lets management know I want to be traded, then I feel like it's in his right to do that. What I don't feel like is in his right is to be unprofessional and show up to training camp fat. Training camp That's fat. what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Like you got, is like, to like, like, this is your obligation, it's your job, yeah, pull up. Be and, in the club with no mask on day. and then have to go through COVID protocols again. Yeah. I don't think that is responsible of him, not just as an employee, but as an adult, as a grown ass man. But you, I'm with you. So with that stuff, I'm saying that's fucked up. If you want to be traded, you know, if, if you have the leverage... To, to determine your destiny, do it. But all that other extra shit, that immature shit, that shit that's making you look like a like a kid, that's not okay. No, no, I'm not. That's not okay at all. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not really with that, man. Just be professionals. You know what I'm saying? We 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 all want the best for you. We want. You know what I mean? And if I'm I'm also like a new thing too is like my thing is like players happiness. I think we get the best out of players when the players are happy. So like if James Harden doesn't want to be in Houston no more, fine, whatever. Just go wherever you want to go. Set it up the way you want to set it up. You know what I mean? And that's that. Go yeah, be happy. from the own, from the owner's perspective though, they're thinking about their bottom line and of thinking course. about that. All the all the fans that come simply to watch James Harden dribble, 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 and shoot a step back three and get sixty point triple doubles. Because that generates a lot of revenue when you get a sixty-point triple double. Um, yeah. So I, you know, I, I, I get that. I guess I don't know. I, I, I guess we got to see how it plays out. I still don't think he's gonna like finish the season with the Rockets. I do think he's gonna be traded uh, very soon. The trade deadline is in March. Uh, that came out as a yeah, as, as an update uh, a few days ago. So um, you know, we see what happens. Indeed, it's gonna be an interesting year. I'm excited. Um, I, I, listen. One thing I can honestly say, I feel like the league is balanced, right? Like I feel like right now it's balanced in the East. I don't know who I don't know who the who the who the who the bottom four will be. Don't know who the bottom four will be in the West. So I'm I happy even. for the season um, to mm-hmm. see what like what comes out of it. But we know what it is, man. It's a gang thing. It's a LA thing. It's a whole lot of repeat thing. You know what I'm saying? We look good. I mean, THT. What I, up? Think, I, I think throughout, the, throughout the season, what I'm going to uh, challenge myself to do is to plant seeds of doubt in your head that the Lakers could repeat. 
even though I think they can. I just think it makes for good content. <laughs> so I'm going to plant seeds of doubt that the Lakers could repeat. Like after the first 20 games, if they're like, you know, 12 and 8, I'm going to be like, damn, they 12 and 8. What's going on? 12 and 8. What's yeah. happening? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah mm, you're not yeah, playing yeah. defense. Yeah, they're having, they're having, they're having, yeah, go ahead. 80 looking a little soft. Yeah, just know we're taking low management. Shout out to Kawhi. He told us best. Low, ooh, we'll catch 30 you on games the playoffs, in. though. Ooh, 30 games in. They only got, ooh. 19 wins? Ooh, what's going on? Yo, what, yo, whatever whatever it is at that Ooh. time, be worried. Whatever it is. Listen, that's my, that's my word for the Lakers. Whatever it is, be concerned at that time. And it was like, Kuz had a bad shooting game last night. Kuz, is he okay? He got an extension and he's playing like Ooh. shit still. still yeah, well, they Harlow. paid him. Look at that. Should have given him so much. They should have kept Brandon Ingram. I don't care. Whatever it is, <laughs> it looks good. You heard? Well, LeBron needs more help. Oh no! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh get? my god! I can't wait till LeBron <laughs> needs more help. Yo, how the LeBron t- needs more help. Headline has been selling papers I'm since 2010. I'm, I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that <laughs> shit this year. He doesn't have Delhi. He don't have Damon Jones. He got AD, and the way he talks about AD is like AD is like God. So let's go. Let's get oh it. man, the LeBron needs more help. Headlines are hilarious gonna to go. me. They're gonna see him. You're gonna see him though. The first time they hit like a two game losing streak on the road. LeBron needs help. <laughs> facts, facts, facts. I can't wait, man. This is this is it's, it's basketball back, man. Oh, now, that's I so was funny. About, here's the only thing I was really concerned about. I was thinking, I was like, damn, not a mask in sight. Niggas are going home, traveling, like they're doing the same things that we're doing. So they're not. I don't think really, they're going. I don't think they're going home. Are they going home, like like their houses, like home, home, like that? That's gonna be scary. Scare. Ooh, they're going home. Sound like that. That's gonna be scary. Yeah, they're going home. They're home. Yeah, they're home now. So, but I think I don't know. I I mean you gotta, I mean you gotta just like trust Adam Silver's plan, right? Because he hasn't hasn't steered us wrong during this entire pandemic in the way that he's, um, you know, structured the league and made it possible for the playoffs to happen and the end of the regular season and a championship. <laughs> you know, and very uncertain and very like you know narrow times so we got to just trust and see what happens and and hope that you know we don't put like we have been like we don't put sports right. over we do and i know you don't like that you're not a big public fan health nah i hate it <laughs> yeah you know yo, no, that's one thing i learned I this it. year trevor hates sports being over public health i hate it being over public health i just had i just hate it being over just regular like decency you know what i'm saying like common sense shit it's real common sense. Like ultimately, in the grand in the grand scheme of things, when we watch a sporting event, we have nothing invested. We have nothing to gain. Yeah, right. There's no. Well, I mean, nothing to I lose. Was, I was betting. I was <laughs> not tan- I mean, but that's a choice, <laughs> that's, right? That's that's not a good choice. Don't bet in sports. <laughs> but that's a choice. Like, there's nothing tangible we have to lose or gain unless we choose to. Yeah. So. I don't understand how that outweighs an international worldwide pandemic. That's just me though. Yeah, I don't know, man. It's gonna be interesting. And that's why one thing I definitely like, they're less protected than than um football players are, right? And football players had like a little bit of issue. But like it is what it is, man. Like you can't call it. Like, like we talked about in the recap, what is like we don't know what tomorrow looks like. So today, stay safe, stay healthy, and fuck it. Indeed. That's all I got for today. That's all I got in the tank. Happy holidays. Happy holidays, guys. Merry Christmas. Um, happy Hanukkah. Hanukkah's coming to an end. And then happy Kwanzaa, uh, de- December 26th, uh, the day after Christmas. And happy New Year also. We guys, we'll see you guys yes, in the New Year with the ne- year. another live episode, guys, January 4th. Sorry, no, January 5th. We, we're going to tape on January 4th. And we may be, be out on January 5th. Oh, and guess 5th. what? We're going to be Live. Live. Yeah, I'll be home in New York. I work back in January. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, we'll send be me those do- test results. Yeah. Huh? Send me those test results. Yeah, I will send Florida. you. Se- Florida, I will, I, man. No, I will send you <laughs> test results before I, can, before I can even go back. I start back working work in January. So before I can even start back at work, I got to get tested. So I'll make sure I'm certified. Um, Florida, but either man. way, we'll be back. And if not, I have the studio in Queens up and running anyway. So let's go. Indeed. Absolutely. All right, guys. So for Josh, is Trev. We out. Make sure you check the socials, the YouTubes, and all that. Also, next week, guys, our 2020, best of 2020 clips is based on our YouTube views and just based on, like, shit that we think is funny. 
For sure. Um, we love you. We so tune into that. I'll release that next Tuesday. Now I'll release it next. Yeah, next Tuesday. Tuesday sounds good. All right, y'all. Peace out. Peace.